He's America working God. He's America working God. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is America working God. All right, good morning, church family. Good morning. good morning. And this morning, we'll be going to Matthew 18, but for those of you online, give me a victory in Jesus in the comments. Like and subscribe. Remember, in order to have peace, you must first have victory. If your victory is in Jesus, your peace is eternal. Hey, you know, here in this world, here on earth, we all look around and we try to, we try to base our worth on how well educated we are, or what kind of job we have, or the things that we own, and and the positions we hold, and we 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 think, okay, well, this makes me a great person. This makes me a great man. And you know, one day, some of the disciples they were asking Jesus the same thing. They said, Hey, who can be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And this was Jesus's response. Let's go ahead and read Matthew chapter 18 at that time the disciples came to jesus saying who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven then jesus called a little child to him set him in the midst of them and said now now think about this for a minute the little child in that day and age a little child that has no rights to vote a little child that has no rights to to, to be able to speak up against people, a little child who who is looked down upon in society for the most part, and he brings this child among them and sits him down. And then he says this, and surely I say to you, unless you are converted and become as a little child, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one child like this in my name receives me. Now stop and think about this. What is it that a child has that most adults don't? A child is more willing to accept wholeheartedly when you tell them about something, when when you tell them, hey, this is the way it is, they're more willing to, to accept it, to trust it. And when you tell a child about Jesus, and you tell a child about Jesus dying on the cross for their sins, and rising again in three days, and paying their way to go to heaven, a child's more apt to be able to, to undoubtedly to believe it, accept it. Think about this. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways, and He'll make your path straight. Now, if He's going to make your path straight by having that kind of trust, a child has an easier time by putting that kind of trust into the Lord, by trusting Him wholeheartedly. So he says, hey, if you can accept the kingdom of heaven, if you can accept God as this child would. And it says, whoever receives one of these children, one of these who are looked down upon in the earth, one of these who are, are in a lowly position, if you can receive one of them in my name, you receive me. Verse 6, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depths of the sea. Man, you know, everybody talks about the love of God. Everybody talks about a loving Jesus, but Jesus is being serious and he's saying this out of love. Hey, if you cause these little ones to sin, if you're harming these little ones, then it would be better if this horrible thing would happen to you. Because in the end, when you face God's judgment, and we're all going to face God's judgment, we're going to all stand before the throne. And it's whether or not we've accepted the gift of Jesus that decides whether or not we make it. 
If we've accepted the gift of Jesus, if we've accepted that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and rose again in three days, then all our sins have been forgiven because he paid for them. But if we, and we're going to heaven, but if we haven't accepted that, we have to answer for every one of our sins. And what is that? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God through Christ Jesus is eternal life. That death is hell. It's, it's an eternal separation from God for eternity. It wasn't intended for me and you. It was intended for the devil and his demons. Verse 7. Woe to the world because of offenses. For offenses must come, but... Woe to the man by whom offense comes. If, you, if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it in, cast it from you. It's better to enter life maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into the everlasting fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It's better to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes and to be cast into hellfire. Now, you know, stop and think about this. Jesus is saying, hey, look, take whatever means you can to fight your struggles. Take whatever means it is. Hey, if watching daily soap operas take the place of God in your life, He's not saying, hey, go cut your hand off so you can't use the remote control. He's saying, remove those soap operas from your life. Remove your TV if you have to. He's saying, hey, look, if you're struggling with lust and you're constantly sinning and, and falling into to pornography, he's saying, hey, look, remove that internet. Remove whatever it is that's causing you to go down that. Take that out of your life. And when you do remove something like that from your life, be sure to replace it with something. Replace it with praise, with worship, with the Word of God. Get to know God for yourself. Replace it with prayer. Because if you don't replace it, then things are going to get rough. Anyway, let's read on. It says, Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven, the angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. They're angels. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine and go to the mountains to seek the one that is strained? And if he should find it, as surely I say to you, he rejoices more over that sheep than over the 99 who did not go astray. Now stop and think about this for a second. What does it take to be one of God's sheep? It takes to be a child of God. To have already accepted Christ. To be forgiven. To be one of God's sheep. To have the Lord as your shepherd. And it says, hey, look, if one of these sheep go astray, if you fall away and you quit following the Lord, it says, hey, look, isn't that shepherd going to go out and find you? And he's not going to come find you to punish you. No, he comes and finds that sheep and pulls them out of that bad situation. Pulls them away from the trouble they've got themselves into. And he brings them back and they celebrate. Why would, why would Jesus do that? Why would God do that? If you've turned your back on him and you're running away straight headway into a sin, why would God help you out? It's because he loves you. It's because he cares for you. And you have become one of his children if you've accepted Christ. And if you're one of his children, he's going to come after you as a father would. He's going to help you try to look out for your well-being. Now, when we go off and do stuff like that, we may cause problems in our lives that we would never have to have had to go through. But you know what? God's with you even through that. We just got to trust him. It says, even so, 
it is not the will of your father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. Stop and think about that. If somebody, if you have a problem with somebody, they don't say go and tell your neighbor. Don't go and tell Betty Joe at church. Don't go tell all these different people. What does it say? It says go to your brother and tell him his faults and work it out in a loving manner. It says if, if he should repent, you've gained your brother. It says, but if he will not hear, take with you one or two more that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, then tell it to the church. But let him be like a heathen or a tax collector. Treat him as an unbeliever if he don't continue to want to change. It says, surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that you ask, my name it will be done for them by my father for where two or three are gathered together in my name I am there in the midst of them you know you wonder if God is listening when you pray you wonder if he's there when you're praying with somebody and the Bible says if two or three are gathered in my name I'm there with them anyway if you haven't started a relationship with Jesus, if you don't know what it's like to be one of those sheep that he takes care of, one of those sheep that he leaves behind, beside quiet waters, one of those sheep that he teaches how to get rest, one of those sheep that he's with even in the valley of the shadow of death, and you have no reason to fear, it all starts with putting your trust in Jesus. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, how much did God love the world? So much that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes, anybody that believes, should not perish, but have everlasting life. That includes you. That's whosoever believes. It don't matter what your past is. It don't matter what you've done. It don't matter if you feel like you sold your soul. Whoever you think bought it couldn't pay for it. Only Jesus' blood could pay for it. So it says, whosoever believes should not perish. And you might be in fear of condemnation for what you've done. But John 3, 17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. If you haven't started a relationship with Jesus, I recommend you do it today. It makes an eternity a difference. Jesus loves you. So do I. Be blessed.